What's up guys, we are finally back with some more Wild Rift Esports and of course we're gonna be continuing with the game 3 of the grand finale that we started a couple of days ago and as always if you want to see game 1 and game 2 of this best of 5 series make sure to check the top right corner of this video right now where I will be putting those first two videos for you to watch if you don't want to get spoiled, okay? Without further ado though, we will uh, jump in right into the draft of game three right now. Now, Berjaya Dragons, 2-0, and zero, twice stomping Geek Fam here completely. Finally, Geek Fam choosing that red side now. Um, they seem to want to change a lot about this draft because this time they are banning Alistair and Yasuo. Yasuo, very, very surprising here. Maybe some type of blue side strategy around Yasuo that Berjaya Dragons has that we don't know of. Um, meanwhile, Berjaya Dragons just banning out that Olaf and Akali, and they actually first picked Singed, man. That is unreal. I, I have no clue why they would do that, but they first pick Singed usually when we've seen Singed nowadays in uh, Wild Rift Esports is when it's used against the Jax as a counter pick, right? Uh, Geek Fam here responds with a Camille Baron lane and a Wukong in the jungle. So again, a very early priority on that Wukong. Berjaya Dragons picks up the Xinzao jungle once again. It worked really well for them last time. And they also secured the Orianna that did extremely well here. I have the, uh, the past match history thingy open on my second monitor here. And yeah, she was also doing very well in that game. They go for that Rakan and Zaya combo again. So Berjaya Dragons is keeping it very, very same, you know, with those picks. Meanwhile, we have a Lux support? What? Is he, is he playing on a free-to-play account or what? <laughs> that is interesting. And a misfortune to boot. Now, uh, before we discuss that... Let me just move my uh, camera to the top right corner. Man, my man is playing on a free-to-play account. Jesus Christ, he thinks he's playing he's playing Genshin Impact or something. Bro, just buy some new supports with the blue modes, man. It's okay. But of course, that means they have a Gragas mid lane, which is really cool. I really think Gragas mid lane is a little bit underrated. It's still very, very top tier. But of course, his best role is Baron lane. Um... But yeah, ooh, we have a lane swap instantly coming in. Take a look at this. Singed in the dragon lane. Wow. They put the dual lane in that baron lane. I, I guess because Singed really gets cocked by um, that Camille. But I, I have no clue. I don't play baron lane. It's my least played role. So I don't know that matchup. I wouldn't say that Singed is too, like, struggles too hard with it. Um, yeah. I don't know, I guess they just swap, and he was already able to poke out the misfortune actually, which is <laughs> very hilarious. You saw it right there on the screen there, uh, while I was talking about the lane swap. He actually has Aftershock as well, which is really funny. Usually you see Singed with Conqueror, but this Singed is gonna get ganked, I think. Ooh, the Xin Zhao gets finished up. I think he was trying to dive, wasn't able to, and the Gragas just flashes in, finishes him with an Ignite and that Barrel. Very nice. Now, the Singed actually didn't get Dove. He was able to uh, sneak away here. Unless he walks back in, I would not recommend that. I think they will instantly turn on him. But he can try to absorb some XP like he's doing. Very well played. He gets some XP. He's honestly really happy. I think he's doing extremely well. Uh, Geek Fan, definitely very good um, early game though, because they were able to get the first one onto that Xin Zhao, which is a big deal. You know, the jungler losing that double buff instantly, that is quite a big deal, I have to say. Nonetheless, going over to that uh, Gragas, did he even... Yeah, I think he did, right? Did he, did he clear his blue buff? I'm not quite sure, but I think the Gragas is running around with a blue and a red buff. Um, on his uh, little on his little belly, you know, which means of course he can easily lane against this Orianna. He can always easily lane uh, mid lane mostly in these esports matchups. You know, what what do they play? They play Corky. No, actually no blue buff. So the blue buff was not cleared yet by the Zin. Um, most of these matchups in the mid lane, you know, you have Orianna, you have Ziggs, you have. You have Corky, right, most of the time. Sometimes you have a Yasu, but no one is really gonna solo kill anybody. They just wave clear most of these control mages, you know. 
Um, so we don't really have any special matchups, but in that Baron lane, we usually have some crazy matchups where we see lots of solo kills, like in that one game that we saw where it was Darius against Fiora, um, which is exactly why Riot wants to stop these, uh, what's it called? And these lane swaps, right? They're, they're really, um, they have some strategic element, but at the end of the day, they are not what the audience wants to see. Uh, we want to see those skills. We want to see those 1v1s, those 2v2s, right? That is the whole appeal of the laning phase of League of Legends. But it seems like it is normalizing again. No team took a tower. The bottom lane tower of Berjaya Dragons is very low, however. So Geek Fan accumulating more and more um, here little leads. You know, they got that first blood. They have approximately a 900 gold lead and... They have half the tower down in the bottom lane and the ocean dragon is about to spawn in 15 seconds is this this oriana is fine she's far enough away from this vukon she is completely fine let me just check something yes sir okay um while i'm checking something though some technical difficulties we are taking a look at almost a caught out oriana but she is fine she retreats she has that the barrier, right? Yes, everyone has barrier. Even Singed has barrier, guys. Now, let's nerf Ignite. Good job, right? <laughs> let's not nerf barrier, let's nerf Ignite. While I'm ranting about our favorite company, the Ocean Dragon is at half HP, but uh, Geek Fan gets a little bit too much pressured there. Pressured too much, excuse me, for the grammar, by Virgil Dragons, and they have to retreat. Virgil Dragons, very happy with this little mid lane push. Ooh, that's a nice inter interaction, you see? They can build ults the Zin, but he just ults her away. Now, you can say that was worth, because I think for a team fight, the Zin Zhao ult is going to be much more important than the Camille ult for a team fight. You know, if you're talking about catching somebody out, then the Camille ult is the you know one of the most important skills you can have. But in a team fight or in this dragon team fight, especially where the jungler is very important, you know, you need that smite. Uh, if the Zinzal doesn't have his ult, he becomes very squishy. So I think that was worth I, I think this Camille knew that would happen. Otherwise, he's <laughs> quite frankly a little bit brain dead. But I think he knew because it was still a good play. Uh, the, the dragon is dangerously low. See, the Zinzal is going in now and he gets cocked instantly. He gets popped instantly. One shot. The smite on the red side is alive. So the Wukong is able to smite the dragon. And they completely blow the team fight away. The Lux ends up dropping, the support Lux, believe it or not, ends up dropping to the Singed, but other than that, two kills for a Geek Fan, total of 3-1 to one in kills, and still only a 900 gold lead, but of course with that Dragon, it is very juicy. Now, let's let's take a look at why, why would they pick this Lux, right? Why would they pick a Lux support? <sighs> oh man, I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue, bruv. They picked Lux support. It is kind of cheeky with the Misfortune, you know. You shoot that Binding and then the enemy is just rooted for a long time, man. The Misfortune just ults, Lux ults, and it's a cool little one-shot. But past that, what else do they have? She's an Enchanter support. She's very uh, capable at spreading the Ardent Sensor buff AoE with her shield. So do they benefit from that? Misfortune? Yeah, but meh. Camille? Yeah, sure, cool. Monkey, meh, I don't know, man. It's a little bit of a weird pick. What could have been a better pick there? Braum was open, you know. Um, they don't really have like that main tank. I feel like Braum would have just been much better and Braum misfortune ult combo is cooler and better anyway, you know. He lays down the slowing field and they can't run out of it. Um, his little fissure, I don't know, man. G Geo fissure. I don't know, is that the Pokemon attack that one hit KOs you, but only has like a 60% accuracy? I don't know, man. Who cares? Anyway, I digress again. I'm talking about Pokemon here. This is why I'm not hired by Riot for this type of content, right? This is exactly why we are not a professional commentative Andy. And what I just said now is also the case, because I say Andy a lot. Anyway, guys. Um... Long story short, I cannot explain the Lux pick. Maybe they have some... Maybe this player just loves to play Lux. Maybe he just loves to play Lux. 
Uh, moving on, we have a little Rift Herald fight. Rift Herald drops before the fight breaks out, though. But this monkey is not caught. It was the Kagebun Chin no Jutsu, and he's able to run away. Beautifully played. However, the Birdman is not able to run away because he dies. Now, listen, guys. The last two games were huge stops. I was giving up on this. I was like, oh, man, this is going to just be the nut. Game three, and it's game over, right? Ooh, is Geek Fan gonna get a little comeback here? We'll see, because they are 3,000 gold ahead. That is definitely a very, very large gold lead at this point in the game. Um, let's take a look on which members this is spread the most. For example, we have a 1,000 gold lead on that Vukong. Very nice, not too bad. Unfortunately, 1,000 gold lead on the support Lux compared to the Rakan. Meh, but. Yeah, that's it. Okay, no. We have like an 800 gold lead on the Gragas, but um, yeah, the gold leads are not on the King it carries, okay? They're not on that misfortune. So that is still winnable, you know? You always have to put these gold leads into context. If your support is 1000 gold ahead, cool story, mate. You know, it's not gonna help you that much. It's gonna be a little bit of a tankier support. Or with Lux, it's going to be a little bit more of a supportive support. We'll see if she goes for the Harmonic Echoes next, or if she will just decide to go full AP. I think she will go for the Harmonic Echoes, though. But, yeah. Anyway, we have the Infernal Dragon spawning in 4 seconds, guys. That is definitely going to be a huge fight. Because 8% bonus damage on all your team members, yes, please. No one will pass that by. No one will let that go down uncontested. So I am sure BJD will try their best to secure it, but we have a team fight breaking out beforehand. Uh, Geek Fan actually engaging, however, the Wukong gets dropped, and Berjaya Dragons, they most of them survive with a sliver of help. The Zaya ends up dropping in the end. Who killed her? Was it the Lux Laser? I'm not sure. But at least they get one uh, after their engage, and because even though the jungler died, they were able to position that Rift Herald uh, before they engage in the mid lane and they're able to get a mid lane tower. So honestly, a very good for Geek Fam in the end. They are two towers ahead. They are 4,000 gold ahead, more even. So they're looking very good. Oh my god, this might be a dead singed. Oh, this is a dead singed. Oh yeah, ooh, close, close though. Very well played by Camille. Very good job. And she probably has a Mastermind, which is the rune, you know, that uh, gives you bonus, makes you deal with bonus true damage on objectives like dragon and towers. And of course, uh, it also gives you bonus XP and gold upon taking towers. I think probably Camille has that. And that means she just got a pretty big bonus there for pushing that tower there as well after that kill. This is suddenly a 2000 gold lead on the Camille, okay, compared to the Singe. So that lane is completely over. Uh, Virgil Dragons has to try to group now and win 5v5 teamfights because they cannot let this singed lane against Camille. She is an absolute goddess right now. I'm not talking about her hips only, okay? We know, hey, she spawned like that, you know? She spawned to be a goddess, but I'm talking goddess on the battlefield. While I'm saying that, though, the Misfortune uh, drops the Rakan, the Oriana dies as well, and this... Camille is going to keep chasing. She's a little bit too far, too deep. Nope, she's okay. She heals back a little bit with her second ability. And it is three kills for zero for Geek Fan right now. This is complete, the complete opposite from last two games. Geek Fan, eh. Maybe they were sleeping a little bit, okay? Maybe, maybe call yourself Geek Sleep. That was terrible, I'm sorry. But uh, they seem to be sleeping in those past two games because now they are completely turning it around. They are bopping Virgia Dragons right here very easily too. This Camille pick, definitely one of the um, core picks though. You know, she survived that lane swap. She didn't die. She didn't, she got dove, but she outplayed, I think. And the Gragas was able to finish up the kill and all of that stuff. It, a lot of the success coming from this Camille. I want to see a Camille ban by Virgia Dragons because last couple games, they were always smurfing, right, these last two games. And now suddenly the enemies have a Camille and you're getting bopped, you know. So uh, I definitely want to see 
a Camille ban for next game. If there is next game, we'll see. But definitely, it seems like there will be one more game. Of course, Vajaya Dragons is at match point. If they win this one, if they get the miraculous comeback, they will have the grand final in the bag. You know, no more games needed. But again, this Camille laning against this Singe. Look at this bottom lane on the minimap. She is pressuring him under the tower. She is going super deep. And um, yeah, they have to be very careful, man. This Singe can drop anytime. He's at half HP. Look, she's engaging onto him. She's jumping around over the walls. Hey, Mikasa. They should really get a Mikasa skin. That would be cool. That would be really cool. Hey, that is, a, that is a waifu. We can all agree on simping. Anyway, we have a huge Orianna Shockwave. Three-man hit. The support and both the AP and the AD carry. Very well done. And that kind of gives them a little bit of breathing room because the Gragas ended up getting killed. Is it enough though? You still have that bottom lane, Singe going up against Camille. The Camille is looking at a Trinity Force, at a Death's Dance, and is going to be building that Adaptive Helm next, most likely. And at that point, there is not much you can do. Even if the Orianna, the Orianna is their saving grace, you know, is their last little piece that is still functioning because the Ariana is at 10k gold, enemy Gragas is at 10.5k gold, okay? So she is not that far behind and it's an Orianna, right? Late game, super strong. However, if the Camille builds that uh, Adaptive Helm, not much you can do at that point, man. She's gonna be too tanky and yeah, not much, not much uh, Virgil Dragons will be able to do to combat her. Also, we have, the, we have solved the mystery of Lux's build. She actually continued to build supportive, no full AP. She built that harmonic echoes. I would say now she would go, she should go for AP though. I would say she should go for probably either a Morel Nomicon or maybe a Rabadons, just the Rabadons to improve those shields. Always good. Morel Nomicon to stop some healing. You know, it's like it's like one of the only AP items that also have like full AP burst items that also have a lot of utility. Uh, that is why I'm suggesting that. And um, everyone has a little bit of lifesteal, you know, that Zinzal with his uh, second ability passive, I believe. Um, that Rakan with his first ability, the Zaya has some lifesteal on that Blade of the Rune King. Always good to get some form of heal reduction. Grievous Wounds. But yeah, this Singed, uh, he survived. Ooh, this is actually good though, because he survives very clutch, and now this Camille has to go back. So again, the Berjaya Dragons secure themselves some breathing room. Um, now, we also have the Dragon spawning. Geek Fan already has two Dragons, you don't want to give them the third. So while it is only a Cloud Drake, I wouldn't say only a Cloud Drake, I think Cloud Drake is very, very strong still, but while it is a Drake that uh, isn't the Infernal Drake, <laughs> let's just say that. Uh, you still want to fight for it because Triple Dragon is mm, possibly too much, okay? But you're also looking at an 8,000 gold deficit, so what do I know? I think they might coin flip here and just go for the Baron. No, they won't. They just decide to secure Vision around the Baron and they, they will try to trap. But GF has that um, Lux that can check bushes. Okay, with her third ability. So that plan is completely nullified instantly. I believe Gragas can also check bushes with his barrel. I believe this also gives some vision. So yeah, not much. Also, the misfortune has her make it rain. Um, yeah. No, no way to trap the GF squad here. The only way to trap them is to remind them that they don't have what their name abbreviation represents. Now, I'm not even just dissing you guys, I'm also dissing the pro players. It is what it is. Some point, at some point, everybody will just hate me. It is what it is. Anyway, moving on, we have, um, I'm trying to stall because these both teams are playing very defensive. I think Geek Fan is not pushing their lead enough. They have an eight, almost 9,000 gold lead now. They should just be starring that Baron. They should just be, um, yeah, I don't know, pressuring more towers. Like they can just pressure uh, the top lane tower, four man, 
um, out rotate, you know, just clear the wind wave, clear the top wave, and then just instantly start up Baron. And then uh, until uh, Virgia Dragons arrive, it's almost down already. Meanwhile, you can have the Camille also engage a fight onto that Singed. But this is also good. They position the Gragas bot and uh, just threaten a dive onto the Singed. So they just secure the tower. That is pretty good here. That uh, should blow up the game very fast because Virjaya has to go for a very des desperate call here. Tries to get the Dead Baron. They didn't have to go for it, but they tried it and they just get teleported on and completely bopped. Um, this should be a complete slaughter. No one dropping, I believe, on GF. Yep, no one dropped. It was a 4v5 and... Uh, no, it was a 4v4. But I think Ragas lost the 1v1 against Singed, yeah. <laughs> they won the 4v4, but the Singed wins the 1v1 against Gragas. I really want to see that replay. That is probably hilarious. I don't know how that happens, honestly speaking. But it happens somehow. But I don't think it matters. Yeah, that's a good light binding there. Huge catch, and I think if they finish him, yep, that should be the game. Very well done here. But you can already see, I still give this series to Berjaya Dragons. Because the way they handled their gold lead was much better than GeekFam. GeekFam took a long time here to end this game uh, while they had a very substantial gold lead. Meanwhile, uh, Burja Dragons, these last two games, they just kept snowballing harder and harder. But again, maybe, you never know, the nerfs, you know? Um, the nerfs can always get them. Now, let me see here. I want to see who gets the most damage dealt. I think it should be, yeah, ooh, but look at this, man. Guys, if you play Baron lane, you probably know how hard it is to deal this much damage with these champions uh, compared to a Marksman, and this Camille almost did as much damage as this Misfortune. I would definitely give her the MVP. Extremely well played, and you know what? We will check out right away the next game, you know? I'm not gonna put a cut, you know? Hey, we'll just, we'll just go jump right into it. Uh, two games in one video. I wasn't sure how many games there will be. I, I was I was honestly thinking, that's why I didn't say that at the start of this video. I was thinking uh, Berjaya would just stop again because they were looking really good. Okay, so Berjaya Dragons, next draft. Game four, they, they take the red side now, okay? They take red side. So um, seems like they really want to be on red side here. That's how I, I believe they won the last two games. And... Um, Geek fam is able to secure first pick Akali. Now I'm not sure how this game will end. Uh, Geek fam actually banning the Wukong. They also banned the Alistair again. Meanwhile, Oriana this time banned along with that Olaf. So BJD doesn't want Oriana in the game, even though they were the ones picking it, right? Um, ooh, Akali, Jarvan, Jungle, and Yasu. This is a fun game, man. This is crazy, guys. Whoo! That is really nice. There's some crazy picks and a Lux support again. Now, was she doing a lot? Yeah, she was pretty cool. She was pretty cool. But was she like a game-winning pick? Probably not. Probably not. Um, but they decide to go for it again, you know? Um... Maybe they just feel comfortable playing with it. You know, she can always check the vision. She can always catch somebody off. So it's very nice. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have a Gragas again on Berjaya Dragons. Um, it will go mid lane again. And we have that Darius. Okay, so that's going to be really fun. He's going to go up against Akali in the Baron lane. Now, that is a cringe matchup. If you play Darius, you know that. It is almost impossible for you to win against her. Corky Marksman, uh, Rakan support again, no Zaya with him this time though, and a Vi in the jungle. Now, this should be extremely fun, okay? Because that Yasu, I, you know why they picked uh, Yasu, I think? Because Yasu and Vi are such a good combo, so they pick Yasu away from that, okay? I feel like that is the case. Also, Yasu, Jarvan, pretty decent. Ooh, I love this. Okay, the lane swap coming in. Because this is, yes, this is Kagami playing Darius. He is the mid laner. This is not the Baron laner going mid. Hold up. Was I... Uh, I was covering the picks. I'm sorry, guys. But it is what it is. It has been done. Um, I forgot to move the camera to the middle. It is what it is. I, I told you what the picks were. But um, yeah, 
this uh, Darius is actually the mid laner playing it. Usually you would see um, the Baron laner is proficient at Darius, right? Because that's the role where Darius is 95% of the games played. Um, yeah, it is what it is. So usually you would see just the Baron laner swapping with the mid laner and him going, you know, into that um, mid lane then and still playing his main champion, his Darius, right? But we actually have Kagami playing the Darius, which is crazy. Usually mid laners can, uh, don't practice Darius. So we'll see, we'll keep a close eye on how good he will play. This should be a very exciting to check out. He was already, you can already see there, um, they were playing super aggressive already, okay? They were already getting bopped a little bit, not gonna lie. Um, both actually, that's why I say they. The Yasuo almost dropped and the, um, Darius, I believe, had to use his barrier, yeah. Dario, the, uh, Yasuo was able to hold on to that barrier. Ooh, that is a huge root there by that Zaya. Um, very interesting that GF actually picking Zaya this time. Maybe they, they were still scared of that combo. It didn't really do too much last game. You know, the Rakan Zaya combo. But um, yeah, they still ended up picking it away. And we have Vi getting a little bit caught, but she was able. Ooh, but she takes way too much poke. Okay. I was going to say she was able to uh, put a lot of poke onto this Lux and Zaya, so it's fine. But then she took half her health, man, in that um, feather recall thingy from the Zaya. I don't know what the ability is called. But yeah, we have that Akali, of course, and that is something we need to keep a very close eye on. She's playing against Gragas, which is a very um, Gragas-sided matchup, in my opinion. He just, you know, he can just farm. He, Gragas cannot, not, never lose lane. There's nothing that can beat Gragas, honestly. He just farms, you know, he's chilling. Um, you know, the, he has a long-range AoE ability that he can use to poke you out or also um, clear those minions. So... There's not much you can do against Gragas, but of course during team fights we will see hopefully that Akali go absolutely crazy. And again, it is a match point still for Berjaya Dragons. Okay, if they win this, it will be three to one. Best of five is over, and they will win this grand final of the Malaysian Icon Series preseason. So let's see how this goes. We have the dragon spawning in 40 seconds. And it is going to be what? An Infernal! Right off the get-go. Alright. The game will already be semi-decided, okay? Because let's be real. Infernal is really that powerful that it kind of decides the game if you get it very early in very high ranks and in esports and stuff. Because, uh, you know, these players know how to use uh, those 8% bonus damage. Vi going back right before she is resetting. She went for a serrated Dirk. So that means she is probably going to go for a Ghost Blade, which is a little bit more of an aggressive Vi build. Um, because I think she will also want to go for a Trinity Force, but I'm not sure. We'll see about that. Uh, meanwhile, the Jarvan will probably go very supportive. He will go for one attack damage item and then full tank. But while I'm saying that, let's see if he's tanking enough already. He is. He uses the Blast Cone kicks himself away from the enemies and flags and drags over the wall, is able to back out. However, that is a 5v4 momentarily right now for the next 15 seconds on the minimap because of course the Jarvan is in the base. It is your jungler. That of course means this dragon is probably gone and it is. Prajaya Dragons is able to secure the dragon. This Akali is a little bit caught out. She uses her ult beautifully to jump away, then flashes away, and then goes back in for the ult to finish the kill. But she also dies, and it is just an absolute slaughter, though, in the end. In total, seven players dying. However, it is all five of Prajaya Dragons dead, and only two of Geek Fam dropping. So while Geek Fam lost the dragon, they won the team fight insanely hard. And that means lots of gold, especially on that Zaya with a 600, uh, 600 gold lead uh, over the Corky and also the uh, Yasuo with two kills, 500 gold lead over that Darius. Now um, they actually swapped now. Yasuo went top 
and Akali is against the Darius in the mid lane, and this is where Akali is happy. Um, Darius cannot beat Akali in lane. It's pretty much impossible. You have to play, you have to just play super safe and hope for a huge mistake by Akali. It's definitely doable, you know, um, but usually if the Akali and the Darius are of equal skill and both very good at their champion, Akali should dominate that matchup quite heavily. Most of the time. I, I don't know, maybe with the Darius buffs, but probably not, man. Let's be real. Akali needs a fat nerf, guys. Okay, she is always banned in these pro matches. She is always picked in higher elos instantly. Like, come on, man. Anyway, while I'm saying that, though, we have a huge team fight breaking out. The Vi actually gets caught, gets dropped as well. The Lux doing some work there, you know, with that um, light binding. And I think this Gragas, ooh, he survives. Very nasty. Is able to finish off that Akali, but he goes back a little bit too deep and dies to the Yasuo. They tried to finish off the Yasuo, but they weren't able to. They were not even able to get that Jarvan. He survives with a sliver of health. And this is again, I believe, four kills um, over to the side of Burja Dragon, uh, to Geek Fam in total there, with that Vi dying at, at the start. That is pretty nasty, guys. That is not looking good for Burja Dragons. Are they gonna choke, man? That is insane if they choke. Because 2 0 lead, you know, if you get reverse swept, that is always sad, man. That feels so bad. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We have Corky going for a Blade of the Rune King. I'll try that build one of these days. Esports Corky build. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Esports Zaya build as well. Sure, why not? Let's try. Blade of the Rune King into Mortal Reminder. Sure. They nerfed Mortal Reminder on the newest patch. This guy doesn't have the newest patch yet uh, because this is a little bit old, as you guys know. But Misfortune still in all my ranked games built Blade of the Room King into Mortal Reminder and it's still amazing. Even if the item is 300 gold more expensive, it is still broken at the end of the day. Now we have a little bit of a breathing room here. However, Berjaya Dragons doesn't have breathing room, okay? Take a look at the gold values. It is a 7,000 gold lead. 6.5 thousand. For Geek Fam here. It's pretty insane. Let's see if this Corky can outplay. He can't. He was he dodged the tornado. He was almost about to outplay the Yasuo. But then the Jarvan just plops in. And just one taps him with his ultimate. Jarvan actually going for the blade of the... Uh, what's it called? Black Cleaver. And he might go for a GA here. Because, or Asterox. I think Asterox would be sick with that BF Sword. Uh, he, he already has that um, Gargoyles, the Gargoyle Enchant on his boots. He has the Armor Boots as well against lots of physical damage, honestly. Only the Gragas there with that uh, magic damage. Of course, Corky deals a lot of magic damage as well. But keep in mind the. Armor Boots will actually reduce Corky's magic damage auto attacks as well because it takes off 10% of every auto attack. It also reduces Akali uh, passive damage, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. And while I was saying that, the Gragas just got completely popped in the Baron lane, guys. I uh, got ganked there by the Yasu. The Akali was already there and they just easily take him out. This Akali can push this lane a little bit now, but while I'm saying that, we have another dragon on the board. And Berjana Dragons tries to start it up, but I think they will get forced away. Because honestly, man, this is a 9,000 gold lead. I mean, Geek Fam doing even better than last game. They're pushing their gold lead much faster. And it's really interesting how in other regions, we've seen some comebacks. Uh, I mean, we all know at this point, I've discussed it numerous times in these esports videos. Wild Rift right now is a very snowball-oriented game. You almost never see a comeback. So that's why you see champions like Lee Sin and stuff like that, right? These early game strong champions that win lane. Or Akali is one of the best exa examples as well. Um, why they're so strong right now? Because they can really push these gold leads and as soon as you get a gold lead, it's very easy to just snowball it further and further until you end the game. Um, but we've seen some comebacks in other regions. 
In this region, however, okay, in the Malaysian Icon series, we have not seen any comebacks. Uh, I mean, we're only checking out these two teams, but so far, Berjaya Dragons stomped Geek Fam twice, and now Geek Fam, uh, in their in this past game and in this game that we're looking at right now, they were able to accumulate a goal lead, and they are stomping hard. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe this means that the winning team is better at winning in Malaysia, or it also means the losing team is worse at coming back than in other regions. We'll have to see how that progresses when finally we see these different countries clash against each other in the Icon Series real season, you know, not preseason. But while I'm saying that, we have uh, two kills easily going over to Geek Fam. That is honestly just a mistake by uh, Virginia Dragons, a little bit overextended there. They get caught out, two easy kills, which means Geek Fam should secure this Baruni. All right. This should be very easy. The jungler is dead. The Darius is going pretty deep, man. He's trying, he's trying. He's going to do some nice damage with his Q. Nope, he gets knocked up by the Yasuo. While he's getting knocked up by the Yasuo, uh, the rest of Geek Fam uses that time to finish off the Baron. Very well done. So there is no way for Darius to steal it. And a very easy uh, objective and a kill. Two kills, actually, again. Going over to Geek Fam. With this, they should be able to end. I, I, th I think in the next two minutes, this game will be over unless uh, Geek Fan makes an absolutely ridiculous mistake. And I'm telling you, it would have to be super ridiculous. Okay? We'll see. We shall see. Let me just think about, let me just check these items a little bit. You know, um, we have Yasu with. Sometimes we see Yasu with Static Shift into Infinity Edge. Sometimes we see him go for the Blade of the Rune King first. It seems like every player has their own preference. I honestly really like Blade of the Rune King because it just gives you so much... Um, the, the little passive it has, you know? It gives you so much sticking power. You EQ onto the enemy, one more auto attack. That's already three instances of, of damage. And you get the little speed boost and the enemy gets slowed. So, I don't know. I... I think the damage is probably more on the uh, static shift, especially because you just one shot the wave and you can just roam. But also, if you one shot the wave, you can't dash through them, so it kind of scuffs you in your trading. It, it, oh, I, I think it's game dependent. When you want to build what? This Yasuo was, of course, spending a lot of his time in the Baron lane <laughs> against the Corky. So maybe that had some impact on that decision. We have a huge team fight breaking out. It honestly looked quite good there. The Yasuo almost got one shot. It looked kind of okay for Berjaya Dragons. The Akali got one shot, but in the end, these wallets, you know, they're too big, okay? This is uh, almost like, like what, 16,000 16, gold lead? Like, that's just stupid, right? That's just ridiculous. You, you can probably go AFK and you're your champion will still somehow win, okay? You, you can literally leave and you can probably win the game. So we have an actual game five, guys. And you can see how excited these casters are. That is, I'm, I'm honestly a little bit sad for Virginia Dragons. They stomped so hard twice in a row and now they just go cocked. They go, they go cocked twice in a row and this, this second stomp looked even harder than the first one. And both of them were play were by playing Lux support. Okay, that is insane. Now let me just check out who did the most damage. I would say, I mean, Jarvan security MVP, which is very nice. But most damage goes actually to Zaya. Very well done. Usually this is the marksman. Look at this, two thousand seven hundred damage on the Vi. That is hilarious. Anyway, guys, with that being said, I will call it a day for this video. Don't want to put three in one. I think that will be a little bit excessive. We will take a look at this legendary game five. The deciding match of this whole best of five to decide the preseason Malaysia Icon Series uh, grand finale winner. Okay. Uh, we'll check that out in the next esports video. And as always, I really hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to leave me any 
feedback in the comments below about the commentary if I have anything to improve. And yeah, with that being said, hope you enjoyed again. Peace.